Hey, Nathan here, and welcome back to another artificial intelligence tutorial. It's been a long time since I did an artificial intelligence tutorial. I was not sure about bringing these series back, but a lot of you requested that I do, so I'm going to continue the series. And the next thing up on the list was actually hiding part two. But before we get into that, I'll have to discuss field of views. That will be this tutorial. And the next tutorial will be the hiding part two. Since we need to use the field of view to determine if the enemy can see the player, then they will just go ahead and hide. If they cannot see the player, then there's no point in hiding. Okay, so the basic concept of field of view is that if an object is within this region, and I did draw it in this sample, so this is the field of view. What you see in red is the enemy's field of view. Now it's a cone. It's not a straight line, it's a curve. And I it's a nice curve, I apologize for my drawing, but it's a nice curve, that way if you have 360 field of view, it's a perfect circle. So a 360 field of view is a perfect circle, it's not a square or anything, it doesn't have straight lines, a field of view is a cone, not a perfect triangle. So that is the field of view, what is in red? We need to see if this object is within this field of view. And to do that, we need to check. You can do it two ways. The default way is to check the enemy's position with the target's position. So the position, depending on how your game is set up, mine is set up by using the center point. So the position of the player is right here. It's the center of the bounds. It's the center of the rectangle. It's the center of the sprite. Now, if I consider that as the point that I want to check for the field of view, that can run into some issues that I will go ahead and demonstrate. Now, I don't know about you, but I consider that inside the field of view. Now, I did not rotate the enemy for such purpose. I'm using the seeking artificial intelligence without the rotation. Just so I can demonstrate in cases like you see here, I consider the player to be in the enemy's field of view. However, the game does not. Why is that? As I mentioned before, by default, I am checking the center point of the player. That's the position of the player, is the center point of the bounds, the center point of the texture. So that center point, if you look there, let me switch this back to red, that center point is not within this field of view. As you see, that blue dot I made is not in this red field of view. So that is why it does not consider that a valid collision in, in terms of field of view. Now, if I... Now it considers that inside the field of view... The whole game stops because it's inside the field of view. Now, you can certainly do that if you want to. If you want to use that in your game, you can certainly just use the center point, the position. But you have to keep in mind, in cases that I just showed you, part of your object will be inside the field of view. And I don't know about you, but I consider that to be inside the enemy's field of view. It's not dead center, you're not looking at the dead center of the object, but you're looking at part of the wing, or part of the elbow, if you're referring to a uh, person. But that will be inside the field of view. So how do we test for that? 
Well, the earlier test just tested the position, which is just the center point. What we need to do instead is to look at the rectangular bounds and look at each edge. Top left, top right, bottom left, and bottom right. We need to test each one of those, so we're testing four points instead of one. If any of those is within the field of view, then it is obviously you're inside the enemy's field of view. So we need to check four times if this player is in the field of view by using these four points instead of just one. So instead of using just this one, we will be using all four points to check. That way we can see if part of the wing or part of the elbow or part of the object is within the field of view. That should be considered the full object is in the field of view. Okay, so I enabled that check. Now let's see what happens when I press space. Now again, the field of view, if you look closely here, enemy field of view distance is 200 pixels. So even though this, it might look like the object is in the field of view, until it reaches that 200 distance or less, it will not do the full check. So you have to be within the distance as well as in that cone of vision. So let me go ahead and press space here. Right before that point. Let's go ahead and watch that again. Right before it turns red, it looked like the enemy, or it looked like the player was in the enemy's field of view, right here. But that cone is just at the edge. It does not consider that point to be in the field of view. Now, of course, if you want to build this, extend it, you can. This whole, you can test this whole line here to see if it's within the field of view. Or you can just test the points. The points will give you more precision than checking just the position. The lines will give you more precision, but it will take a lot more time to do the calculation. So the point... Top left, top right, bottom left, and bottom right, they are not in the enemy's field of view. And again, I apologize for my drawing. Those points are not in the cone. They're not in the field of view. So at this point, it does not consider that to be a you're outside of the field of view because those points failed the test. So right there, that considers that a true, you are in the field of view. So instead of drawing red, I'm going to draw black since the whole thing's red. So that is now the cone. That point right there that is in the field of view. So that is what we are doing when we talk about field of view, is to check to see if the object is within a cone of vision. Instead of using the object's position, you will want to go and look farther. In the case for my code here, I just check four edges of the bounding box that represents that texture. You can go even further and test the whole line if you want to. Okay, so let me go into the coding here. So to test if it's within the field of view, 
we have a list of edges to test. And again, this is the, my implementation. I only check the four edges. So if you want to test a whole line, your code will obviously be different than mine. So I have a list of edges to test. I provide the top left, top right, bottom left, and bottom right edges of the bounding box that represents our object. Now let's loop through each edge in the edges to test. If the distance is less than the field of view distance of the target, which means we pass the first criteria. The two criteria for field of view is number one, if you're within the distance, if you're within the object's viewing distance, then it will proceed to check part two, which is if you're within that cone of vision. So this is the first test. If the edge you are testing is within the object's field of view distance, then we check to see if that edge is in the field of view cone, that cone of vision. If it is within that cone of vision, we just return true. We don't need to bother testing all the other edges. It doesn't matter if they're not in the field of view or if they are in the field of view. It'll be true nonetheless. And if nothing, if everything fails, it will return false because we're not in, within the field of view. Okay, so let's see the method here for vector is in field of view. So I built this with vectors. You can build it with points or anything you want. I did it with vectors because it will be easier to use the distance and other vector methods if we ever do need to. So we test a, any given vector, which is the edge we are testing. So let's say we're testing the top left edge. That will be a vector. So we're testing the top left vector with the target object. So we need to calculate a vector between the target and the edge we are testing. Then we need to check that angle. So let's go ahead and draw a diagram of what I'm referring to. Here is, let's add a little box here that is red. So here is the target, gameplay object target. Okay, now let's have a red cone of vision to represent the field of view. So that is the field of view for the target object. Okay, and we're testing a point P. Any given point, so we're testing point P. So I'm going to make that point black. Let's put it outside the cone, outside of the field of view, but inside the distance. So it is checking the second criteria. It passed the first criteria. It is checking the second criteria. It will be false. Of course, we know that because we can visually see it, but the program has to calculate it to determine if it's true or false. Okay. I'm going to switch this color to blue here. So the first thing we test here is this part right here. If the angle of the vector source to target. Okay, let me go ahead and create a magenta line from the source to the target. So that is the vector from the source to the target. All right, let me go back to black here. So if the angle if the angle is greater than the target's rotation, what is the target's rotation? 
the target's rotation, let me switch this to red because it refers to the target. The target's rotation is the center point of the cone. I apologize for my drawing again. That's supposed to be the center point of the cone. This is the rotation of the object. It is pointing up. So the target rotation minus the target field of view divided by 2. Why is it divided by 2? Why do we divide the field of view by 2? Take a look at the cone here. That is a giant angle. The field of view, let's say, is 45 degrees. We divide that by 2 because the rotation is the center point of the cone. So we're checking this side and this side. We're checking the angle to this point and then the angle to this point. If the angle of the source to target, which is the magenta line, is within these two angles here and here, then it is within the field of view. Okay, so that is why A, we divide by 2 because the target's rotation is the center point of the field of view cone. We divide by 2 and then we plus and minus to get to both angles, the far left and the far right of the field of view cone to get those angles. If the angle of the edge we are looking for is within those two angles from the field of view cone, then it is within the field of view. So this was a pretty tricky topic to discuss, and I wasn't sure how to discuss it. And I remembered I can, with Camtasia Studio, I can draw, and I've done that a few times before, but like I mentioned, this is the first time I've done an artificial intelligence tutorial in probably a year or close to a year. So I think that was the only series I started drawing with Camtasia Studio. So I think that would really help that visual representation of what I'm referring to. And when I draw the cone and you see me point... And saying, I'm looking at this, you need to check that, this is the rotation, uh, all that stuff. You know what I'm referring to, instead of just hearing me talk. Okay, so that is it for this tutorial. I hope you enjoyed it, and I hope you understood everything about it. Next tutorial, we will include this field of view discussion with our hiding part two and take a look at making the hiding functionality much better. I hope to see you next time.